Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and as you can see I've been doing some more work on the S4000 conversion, you're converting this old um, electron microscope control computer into something that's functional and that's usable and as you may have um, seen basically the keyboard's gone we've actually got a workbench in there, a work desk and what I've done this, uh, it's not finished this yet, I do need to take this, this is literally just roughed out, um, I've only just, within the last hour actually, got this and put it all together and um, decided yes this works, I'm happy with it, um, I'll take it all apart and uh, I need to trim a little bit off, I need to sand some of the pieces of the wood and things like that, but um, this is basically how it's going to look when I've, um, when I've finished it, so we've got a nice desktop here, we've still got where the screens are going to go back there and then we're going to put another screen in here where all them controls are at the moment but if we get hold of this now, but like I said, bear in mind this isn't finished, it does still stick a little bit but if I pull on it, that just slides out I've got a really nice amount of space here and the, the really good thing, say I've got a computer I'm playing with, I've got it set up in there I want to do something else, I've got plenty of room for, you know, keyboards, stuff like that and I'm finished with it and I just want to put it away all I need to do is just push it in it's away when I want it again I can pull it out and I've done this in such a way that there is, an, even with that pushed it as far in as you, go, you can go there's about um, an inch gap between the back of that and the actual back of the um, unit so you know, keyboard cables, things like that, can actually drop down and be connected to computers underneath. What I have also done, and I did make sure this was right, I've made it so, um, basically, um, an Atari ST, an Amiga 500, something like that, can sit on there, um, and that, basically, there's enough clearance there to actually allow that. I can put um, something I'm playing with, say, an Amiga, or like I said, an Atari ST, a, a car, and something like that on here. Um, be fiddling about with it, want to put it away for a bit, and all I have to do is just slide it away until I want to do something else with it in the future. So I, I was quite pleased that I actually managed to get that to work as well as I did. Um, the thing is, though, now all that's done, we've nowhere to put the um, original computer that was in here so um, I've been kind of putting off doing it but um, I think what we're going to do in this video today is basically take that thing up to pieces I want to have a look at the keyboard that it uses to be honest and try and um, see if that keyboard can be used for something else because it is really nice it does have really nice keys on it I don't think it's going to be a PC standard or anything but we will take that I'm not going to throw any of the electronics away from the original computer I will find a nice big box and put them all in that box but I have no use for the metal work there has been actually a, a huge amount of metal work I've taken out of this thing it now probably, it probably weighs about a quarter if not um, less than what it actually weighed when I first uh, got it here I can actually lift this off the ground quite easily on my own I mean it's not light it's all steel the entire um, chassis I thought it was aluminium but it's not it's all steel uh, apart from just the back panel uh, which is um, aluminium um, it's like I say it's actually manageable now you can move it around so when um, I first got it it was so heavy it took two people to barely move it um, and basically even the monitors everything inside basically had shielding There's just I've, I've removed all the shielding so we don't need it like I said this is not going to be used in an industrial application or a medical application or a scientific application it's going to sit in here and be used for what I'm uh, designing it for so I have removed all the extraneous shielding just to make this thing you know lighter I mean I've even got more yeah that was the inter internal shielding and then that's the external shielding for the monitors. You know, there was two. There was this external shielding, then that internal shielding that I showed you, and then the chassis for the actual uh, monitors. So there is no point in putting all that weight um, back in. Put that out of harm's way for the moment. 
There is no point putting all that weight back in this thing for what I'm um, planning to use it for. So like I say, I've stripped all that out. I've stripped all the runners and everything that the original computer would have um, fitted to to be able to allow me to actually do what I've done with the, um, with the pull-out shelf here. So, like I said, basically what we're going to do is we're going to um, completely strip down um, the original computer and possibly we may actually be able to finally figure out what the CPU it uses. It could be something completely um, custom and um, weird and wonderful, but I'm just wondering if it uses like a fairly basic 8-bit microcontroller. It would be Funny as if um, we get down there and there's a Z80 in there or there's a 6502 or something like that in there, but it's probably something a bit more exotic or a bit more customy. Uh, don't even know whether it's going to be 8 bit, 16 bit, or um, what. So, what we'll do, um, I'll, res I'll reset the camera up now and we'll start tearing this thing down and we'll see what we can actually find about it. Now, I'm not going to start ripping the boards apart or anything. Uh, We'll put the boards safely away in a box, and one of the boards actually that's in there, I don't actually think there's anything to do with the computer side of it per se, so that could probably just go in my scrap box. But I will keep the um, main computer boards for this thing, for at least for the time being. Uh, they have got lots of useful stuff, lots of SRAM, things like that on them, so they're not something that I'd just be chucking away anyway. So I'll get the camera repositioned and we can have a, uh, we can have a quick look at that as I tear it down. So back in a sec. Okay, we're all set up now. The first thing I want to do really is see if I can take this keyboard off and have a proper look how this thing's actually put together. I'm hoping it's actually two separate things and that is going to be a separate keyboard unit to the actual uh, the rest of it. But this has got loads of useful switches and things we can salvage off it anyway. So we've got another screw there. Me. Ah, that's coming free now. One thing from actually doing the monitors, because I didn't actually film me stripping the monitors um, out of the case, but it, there was quite a lot of work in. Oops, got the chair wrapped around the tripod leg again. There was quite a lot of work involved in getting those um, two monitors out of the actual um, top of it. That's why I'm basically I'm not putting all that shielding back. One. I don't need it, it's just that excess weight, and two, if I want to get the monitors back out for any reason, like I said, it's, there was over an hour there, uh, just fiddling and faffing around to get those, um, aha, so right, I think we need to get them controls off, and then hopefully we should be able to take this top panel off, so let's have a look here, let's see if we can get these, yeah, it seems to be them that are holding um, holding it down. Now these controls, if I'm right, yeah, these are a bit like uh, what's on that on the brightness controls for the uh, monitors. Basically, I have to lift these little caps off. In fact, these are really nice controls. These will definitely get reused for something else. They have super super nice little um, knobs that used to go on the end of potentiometers. But what you should never do with this type of knob is just try and pull them off the shaft. Um, you will end up breaking the potentiometer or the knob or both. Uh, what you have to do is you have to ease this little top cap off like you can see me doing now. Then we need a screwdriver, and basically there's a screw in the end. Turn the screw about half a turn, and they'll just come straight off. Like that. A lot of high-end audio gear has this type of um, control knob. Or professional audio gear, shall I say, rather than high-end audio gear. I'll put these tops back on because these these are nice. These will get reused for um, another purpose, definitely, because they are nice um, controls. These. Put all those on there. I 
I need to get that one off which we need a set of um, pliers for. Those should do. It's the same type of thing only it's a nut rather than a screw so we just get grip hold of it and give it a turn. That will come off. We'll put all those, like I said, those will come in really handy for something for a amplifier project or um, something like that. We've got a really nice, those are, those are really handy. We'll then one side for now and we should be able to lift this plate off now. Yeah, there we go. This is what I'm, I'm more interested in than anything else, is the actual um, keyboard. I don't know, this is quite interesting actually. All, basically that panel and that panel are um, to do with, I think it's to do with um, creating the voltage, the very high voltages that this thing uses. Um, that's just the computer input keyboard. Um, like I said, that's what I really want to keep. But we'll get these boards out of the way. Loads and loads and loads of screws, spacers, you name it out of this. It's getting me all sorts of really handy, um, handy spare parts. You wouldn't believe how, you know, Things like these screws, the little standoffs and stuff like that, you only you, you just want four. Just to finish a project off and um, you have to then you order them from mouse or a digikey or someone like that and you have to wait for them to arrive. It's just handy to have a, a jam jar with a load that you've salvaged off something and you can just get on with the project. That's how I like to work anyway. That's why generally speaking when I'm scrapping something I save all the little bits like this. Right, let's see if that board will come out now. Oh, I've missed one there. Okay, I'll put those to one side. This board should come out. There we go. How's that connected? Oh, I've got a ribbon cable on the bottom. Well, I have even more um, cable for my um, my collection of cable. And it's all stuff. I said it's all stuff that will be handy for future future use and future projects. Let's take that off. And there we go. Even these little um, key switches might be handy. I'm sure they're going to be quite top quality. But they have a little. A push on key switch to just pull off. Those, could, those again could be uh, very, very handy for uh, a future project. So that'll go. They basically, boards like this will just go into my um, scrap boards box, which is uh, now underneath the workbench. But what I might actually do, thinking about it, I might pull all those um, caps off and um, put them separately in a little bag. Because I'm sure those will come in very, very handy. Them uh, little eight segment displays, they should come in, uh, the seven segment displays, sorry, they should come in very, very handy as well. We've got some more on the here, and a couple of more of them keycaps. Let's carry on the disassembly. Keyboard is in quite interesting, definitely. I just want to see what kind of um, key switches it uses. It's um, keyboard. It's a uh, Fujitsu by the legend uh, Keyboard Fujitsu Limited. Right. Again, I've missed one then. Okie dokie. Again, this should come out. I've just got one lot of a, a sharp ribbon on this. We'll pull that off. But even bits of ribbon cable like that are incredibly useful. Right. 
Right, now we're down to the keyboard and there's something there. Three. It looks like we need a spanner to take these off. That should do the job. There we go. There we go. So it does look, these are all individual key switches by the look of it. So that is a really, they're not clicky, really. But um, they do all look like they are individual. Um, let's see if we can pull a key off and have a proper look. There we go. Oh no, I've never come across switches like that before. I have to make that out. I'll have to take um, a more detailed look at this um, at this keyboard, but it does look very, very well made. I wonder if it could be made PC compatible. I'm not sure. It'll probably take far too much work than's really um, than's really worthwhile. But let's get that keyboard out. In fact, let's get this plate this plate out next, so we can see what's underneath there. I'm going to have a hell of a lot of scrap metal to get rid of by the look of it. Put them over there. Oh. Unfortunately, this is one problem I have already come across, is that some of the screws on this thing really don't want to come undone. One at the back there that's being stubborn. Let me just give that a little that now and give that a tweak. There we are. Maybe that'll help just free that screw off. That screw really is stuck. We might be able to get hold of it with some pliers and turn it like that. might have got to get some turn on that then. Give it one quick go and then I'll have to pause and um, see what I can do about getting this. Ah, there we are. That got it. Right, we've got that one out. So we should be able to take this plate off now. Yep. And that, there's some serious weight, real weight in that. I think one of the local scrap men are going to be incredibly happy. But an interesting board there that I haven't come across before. Um, right, I know that that board there um, is nothing to do with the actual computer. So let's get that let's get that out of the way. If we can. Hopefully we can unscrew this. One screw out there. I think there's one at the back. Yeah. A screw there. But I do need to salvage a few of these um, screws to be able to put the monitors um, back in because I did have to damage a couple of the screws getting them monitors out because they were basically been, I think this thing's been dropped at some point and some of the screws were basically bent 
and I had to um, use a Dremel to um, get them out. Right. So that's an analog board. Let's disconnect wherever that analog board goes to, which is that there, I think. Possibly get this out of the way now. That goes along there. There we go, that's free. That connects onto there. Get that out of the way. So that perhaps. Hmm, that's interesting that. That's almost like it's a bus connection. Because it does go between all... Let's see, let's get that out of the way now. So I'm guessing that this board here is more to do with the analogue side of it. Because I think I did have this disconnected and the computer still actually fired up and, um, fired up and working. So let's get that out of the way. Now, the main processor board is this one down here, and this is what we've not been able to actually spot the CPU on yet. Hopefully now I've got all that out of the way, we might actually not find, figure out what the CPU is. Now, there's an NEC chip here. Um, that's a D8279. Don't think that's it. This is 7400 series logic here. Um, same here. You know what, I cannot see an actual um, CPU on this board. Even though the board does say CPU IO. Most odd. Let's get the uh, keyboard disconnected. Again, that's a strange proprietary connector. It's not a standard that um, I can actually looks very much like what um, I think Acorn used for their mice for the three button mice, it's very similar to that connector so we've got the keyboard out of the way because I quite like that keyboard, I'm going to probably try and do something with that but we still haven't found out what the CPU is unless it's under there let me get my anti-static Bring you in a little bit closer so you can see this, this is more what I'm looking at. Right, I'll drag you down. Okie dokie, here we are. Now, this is meant to be the, um, well you can see it there, it says CPU IO board. Um, I cannot see anything on there that resembles a CPU unless it's underneath that ROM board there. We'll pull that out and we'll have a quick look. Right, believe it or not, there's the CPU. And it's a... Um, ...6800, I think. I think it's a um, 6800. Which is... Is the 6800 the same that's in... Um, oh, that's a 6809, isn't it? I was thinking what's in the... Um, Coco and the um, Dragon 32. It's that's a 6809. That's a 60. Yeah, I think it's a 6800 by the look of it there. So is that real of the CPU? That they, I, I suppose it doesn't really need a, a massive amount of processing power for what it's doing. It's just just an industrial control computer. That's all this thing really is. We do have a notorious um, barrel battery there. 
sealed lead acid, um, sealed NICAD battery, 3.6 volts, 60 milliamp power. And amazingly, unlike most of the um, them we ever see, that hasn't leaked. I'm guessing that that's like, like a seriously high quality version because like, that has no leak sign of leakage whatsoever on it. Now, let's get some more of these boards disconnected, just in case there's something you know underneath that board, but I don't think so. I think that's really it. Let's. Uh, See if we can get this board out of the actual. There we go, that's one out. That's another one out. They're those um, board mounts, basically, you have to squeeze them in with a pair of pliers and just gently pull up and whittle, and they will um, pop out. Yeah, I do have to be careful, don't, obviously don't put too much um, strain on the board, especially if it's a, a board you care about. I'm not that bothered about this, to be honest. Let's, uh, let's get that out. Come on. There's always an awkward bugger that won't. Come on, out you come. Let's try this side first. If not, we'll just take some snips to them and. Ah, oh, there we go, that one's come out. So if they won't come out, we can just take some snips to them and uh, get rid of them that way. There we go, that's that one out. I think there's one more, which is that. Yeah, it's just that one there that's being awkward. In fact, I'll just get the snips and I'll just snip that off. And we can get this board out. There we are. And that one's jumped back on. Joy. Even some of those little standoffs I will be keeping, I will be extracting you know, the best of them from the other side. From the bottom of the metal work there. And they again will be reused, they are handy things. Especially when you're making your own little um, projects and you want the board stood off. There's that power into this board. There we go. Essentially that there is the main oops sorry that is the main CPU and IO board for the computer. So basically, from, from what I can figure out, with basically the operating systems in those ROMs there. Um, I really actually can't see much in the way of RAM on this board. Um, unless there's some underneath there. That's what, there's the CPU. At first I thought this was the RAM here. Um, D uh, 4701AC. I, th I think that's just some um, logic. I don't think that's SRAM. I think that's just some logic. Um, I can't actually see any RAM on this board per se at all. It's quite quite unusual actually. I'd expect to see a little bit. I'll put that to one side. Right, so this this is an, this is a memory board, memory and I/O. Again, we need to get this out of the um, out of the computer as well. Um, and get these out the same way. Squeeze them in. There we go. That's one out. Try this one. 
There we go. That one out. Got the last two here. That one out. Can't get it out, just cut the top off it. There we go, that should pop out now. Ooh, come on, out you come. That one's popped back in. Or I forgot to take it out, there we go. There we are, right, oh, power. Yeah, each one of these boards, uh, the main boards, all have their own 5 volt power, power feed. Now, I believe this board did have something to do with um, producing the video as well. Because I think it was one of those that I connected the um, monitor up when we actually got this thing up and powered up. Right. that off there. Oh, I've got a connection there, we can disconnect that. Now this actually does have um, some SRAM on it. These attachy parts here. This is all SRAM. They're 256k SRAMs those. So that's, that's one, two megabytes of RAM is it? That's 512k, 1 megabyte, yeah, 2 megabytes of RAM it's got on board it. Um, that's about it. All this is just um, glue logic, it's just 74 series um, logic ICs. I'm guessing these are only um, two layer boards then. Yeah, I think they are, they're just two layer boards. Nothing, you know, really exotic in the manufacture of this thing. But I suppose when you can make the boards this big, uh, there's no problem. You know, you might as well go with just a two-layer, um, a two-layer design. It keeps the costs down. And last board we've got here. I think this is the last bit of what we can actually say is the computer. Um, try and get this out of the way, and we can get this board out as well. As I've said, I will be keeping the um, I will be keeping all these boards. It's just that all this metal work I need to get um, I need to get out of the way because I have nowhere to um, keep it really. And I need to declutter a lot of the um, scrap that I've got here anyway. Right, so that can go for scrap. This is the last, the last board we want to get out. Get all these disconnected. And another lovely load of um, this cable. And that even goes. There's even more underneath, so I'll have to pull that out um, a little bit later on. What's this board? Got something else here. There we are. So what's this part? guessing this is some kind of power regulation. I've got a lot of capacitor banks here, some chokes, quite a nice beefy 160 volt um, capacitor there. Some big beefy power transistors. So I'm guessing it's something to do with power regulation. But like I said, it's just a but this is a type of board that will just go in my scrap PCB um, box and you know 
caps like that, perhaps these capacitors, possibly some of the transistors, things like that will come in for other, um, other uses in the future. So I'll stick that to one side and let's get this last, um, this last board out of the case. Okay. okay, we've got more of those little um, clips on there. This is another uh, memory I.O. board by the uh, what it says over there. So once we get this out, let's have a look what's on it. Okay. Oops. Kick the tripod again then. Let's get in there, let's pull that free. Hopefully you can see something, not just uh, the back of my head. There we are. We've just got these last few um, on there. Ah, I believe this is the one that we got the um, video out of. When we was fiddling around the other day, when we got this thing actually up and running. There we go. That's the final. That's the final board out there. And again, we've basically got a load of um, glue logic there and yet more of the same RAM, um, this is all SRAM again 256k, um, we've got a half a meg, one meg um, half. so we've got another two meg, three megabytes of um, SRAM um, on this board as well, Th this could be really really handy um, those RAM chips and apart from that, all, like I said, all we've really got in here is just a load of glue logic um, that's it. That's basically it. So what did it need all that RAM for? We've got 3 meg on there. Um, the other board had 2 meg, so it's got 5 megabytes of RAM this thing. I'm just trying to figure out what it was doing using, you know, what it was needed all that RAM for. Cause surely not just for sh running the very simple program that um, we saw when we got the menus up on it and everything. The RAM must have been used for something else, but it's unfortunate without having the manuals and how to actually operate this thing, it's not something we're really ever going to know. Um, but we have, I mean, we have enough that if I really wanted, I could get this thing um, actually set up and running just as, as it is here. We've got all the boards, we'd need to run it here. We've actually got the uh, wiring loom to connect them together, to connect all the boards together, and we even have the keyboard to um, connect to it. The thing is, there's basically, there's nothing we could do with it. It's not as though um, you know we can change the operating system or anything like that. This is an embedded system. This is more akin to your video recorder than a computer, basically as in it's set to do one function and one function only you would have to rewrite what's on those ROMs there to basically to be able to make it to do anything um, anything useful anything interesting would involve rewriting what's in them ROMs there it's, like, it's, it's not got an operating system or anything like that that we can just um, fiddle about with load other software on or anything like that so this is basically just a, a very useful source of vintage computer parts. I mean, those two EEPROMs could be reused. What I probably will do, actually, is I will um, put them in the EEPROM programmer and dump the contents out just to, just in case, you know, they've got lost to history and um, they're not uh, available anymore. So I will dump them ROMs out. But apart from that, it's just a case of what useful components we can actually salvage um, 
we can salvage off these boards. But I'm not, I'm not going to rip them apart just yet. Like I say, I'll put those boards like that uh, in an anti-static uh, bag, and they can go in a basically in a box and get labelled up what they are. I might even put the keyboard, at least for the time being, because I do fancy having to play more of a play with that. But I'll probably just put the keyboard as well, the same. But essentially, what we've done, we've, we've reduced all that down to just that which is a lot more storable and a lot more manageable than all this metal work I will carry on doing a little bit more stripping down and um, you obviously I'll pull out I'll pull out like more of this wiring loom and stuff like that um, because this is just very very useful cable to have and then the scrap man can have the rest of this steel because um, I really don't need it it's not even as though it's much use for repairing Land Rovers and things because it's all cut and slatted out like that. If there were big solid sheets, uh, I mean I have kept a few bits I've cut off the um, front of the actual um, console itself. Uh, they'll be kept for you know pat patching holes in the Land Rovers and things like that. Um, this really isn't all that much used to keep. I'll uh, let the scrap man have um, all this metal work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little update on the project. So you can see the actual um, the actual con your know, console itself there is it's coming on fairly nicely. I'm really, really pleased with how that uh, workbench worked out on it. You know, my pull out. Considering it's only got. Oops, get behind the uh, camera again. Considering it's only got, you know, about six screws um, so far holding it in, I'm really pleased how that works. It, it feels fairly solid as well. I certainly wouldn't worry about putting my Amiga on here and um, everything and setting it up and that's like I said it'll be great when I've got the mono screen, the colour screen and the proper VGA LCD screen in at this side here and this will be a really useful addition to the workshop really for setting computers up for doing a bit more long term testing on them and, uh, and things like that. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, can you see me or not? I don't know. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you um, enjoyed this little update and enjoyed watching me tear that thing apart. So, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.